Hold on one second. That's Tuka's phone, I think. There's a phone ringing. Not my phone, I've switched mine off. It's your ringtone. My ringtone? How much do you want to bet? 50 quid. 50 quid. Whose phone was it? It's got a dog on it. Got a dog on it. It's mine. <laughs> but I switched it off. <laughs> I mean, <I'm> 50, <laughs> 50 quid. I owe you 50 quid. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon's Den, Britain's most intense elevator pitch, in which aspiring entrepreneurs go head to head with five deal hungry multi millionaires. Peter Jones. I love this job. Titan of tech and the den's longest serving dragon. You need to take a deep breath. I know, I'm literally shaking. Deborah Meaden, the sustainability champion. <laughs> who puts her money where her mouth is. Sadly, that money is staying right where it is. Tuka Suleiman, a fashion industry maverick <laughs> who's never afraid to take a punt. I have to be passionate. That's fascinating. Zara Davies. I want to eat your face. The queen of crafts. Look at this way, Stephen. Who tells it exactly as it is. I'm just trying to cut through the BS and get it straight. Thank you. And Stephen Bartlett. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Social media mogul. He's the baby of the bunch. And bringer of fresh fire. Have you got anything nice to say, Tuka? No. Tonight. Listen, short of time, I've got people to see. It looks like it's come out of a Frankenstein's workshop. Is that a compliment? At the moment, I'm holding all the aces, you've got none. Good luck with that negotiation. The last thing I'm going to do on date night is start with excitement and end with disappointment. Know a good deal when you see one. Listen, I don't like it. <laughs> He's my accountant here, yeah? And she's joking about the accountant part. No, 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 come on. That question is your chance. I don't understand the question because I feel as though I've kind of answered it. No, you haven't. I'll remember that. Welcome to Dragon's Den, a coliseum of commerce for hopeful entrepreneurs, where victory means cash and credibility, but defeat means leaving with nothing. Ready, guys? This is it, guys. First into the den are Suzanne Haynes, Aston Domain, and Omar Mian. Don't think anyone's uh, ever been on with what we've got, so we're excited. Oh, here we go. We feel like we're bridging the gap between luxury and sustainability. Oh. Oh. Very um, fancy. Very boudoir. It says portion, by the way, because I know you won't be able to see it. Portion. Portion. Potion. A potion. Po potion. It says right. potion. Right. Tuka Suleiman's finally on the money with the name. But will the power team's pitch result in some cash? Good luck. Mm -hmm. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Hi, Dragons. I'm Omar. I'm Aston. And I'm Suzanne. We're here today seeking an investment of £50,000 for 6% equity in our brand, Potion Paris. Potion Paris is a multi-award winning, toxin-free, cruelty-free and vegan lifestyle brand with a bright new perspective on luxury scented products with sustainable values. After an early success in the Middle East, followed by an abrupt loss, I found myself disillusioned and alone in a foreign country, admittedly resulting in a struggle with my mental health. This led me on a journey of rediscovery to identify the simple moments in life that should be cherished. In the Middle East, fragrance is very personal. It's all about layering fragrance at each step of one's daily cleansing regime to create a truly signature and lasting scent. Combining these Middle Eastern traditions of fragrance with the opulence and exquisite refillable vials of 18th century, we then spent three years developing our range of products, which we have here today. We already have in production an exciting new range of innovative and refillable products, such as our refillable candles, oil pendant necklaces, body washes and lotions. In our first full year of trading, we turned over £520,000, which is mainly from our set, which is seven handcrafted perfumes and our iconic vial. We also have some of our beautiful products available for you today inside your boxes, and we would love to welcome you for any questions which you may have. A range of luxury fragrances with a Middle Eastern influence is the offering from Omar Mian, Aston Domain, and Suzanne Haynes. They're seeking £50,000 in return for a 6% share in their business. <laughs> I might have taken in a little too much potion, I think. The trio's pitch was nothing to sneeze at. So has Peter Jones smelt a money-making opportunity? What is interesting 
is that I actually think this is the first time I've come across a product where the packaging is better than the product. Is that a compliment? <laughs> well, actually, no, I think this packaging, I think, is very, very yeah. high-end. Thank you. It's fantastic. But I'll be honest, this is quite chintzy and cheap. Why have you gone for cheap and plastic? Um, it wasn't and... actually cheap. Because this even rattles so, when it's so, in. So, to be honest, initially, we were worried about the weight, uh, so not being too heavy, so that's why we went with that option. What I think you've done is you've gone so high-end on the packaging, I've now got an expectation. I think so it's... That leads to disappointment. Yeah. If I was to send this to my partner, Tara, <laughs> I think Tara would get quite excited. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a bit like date night. Yeah. The last thing I want to do in date night is start with excitement and end with disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> OK? So, with that in mind, this is what this product does for me. Just sorry, just one point on that. Since we've launched, one of the best things for all of us has been the feedback that we've received from customers. We've had messages and emails from customers who've actually said their daughter gifted it to them. They've actually cried and they've been really emotional about yeah. receiving such a nice, it's just a treat. So we have had really, really good feedback. Omar is standing his ground, despite Peter Jones's concerns that when it comes to his products, style has taken precedence over substance. Now, Deborah Meaden wants to focus on the financials. Have I missed when I was so busy unwrapping <laughs> all of these lovely shiny things? Um, what are the price points? So we sell the collection set for £130. So that's this, yes. which is yeah. a set of inserts yeah. of vials. And what's that costing you? An average landed cost is £23. Oh, right, so there's... Plenty of margin. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Can I just... You will n have known that the sustainable <laughs> thing would yeah. have... Yeah, my exactly. ears. <laughs> <laughs> so, guess what? I'm going to ask. Um, so, but what's behind that claim? So, just first and foremost, to make it clear, we never actively market ourselves as a sustainable brand. No, but, we... but you're marketing yourself to me yes. as a sustainable yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah. So, so what, that's what, what I'm asking. So, once a customer collects 10 empty refills, they're able to send them back to us. We clean and reuse those bottles and they get gifted um, a small refill box over there. And how many have done that? We've had 300, 300. yeah, just Around 300. Around 300 so far. So, and how many have you sold? Six and a half thousand now. What I was going to say, though, just to add to that, is it's a really hard balance to, you know, give something to the customer that they're overwhelmed with at the same time as being sustainable. So, for every box that we sell, we do plant a tree, and that's our commitment. The trio believe that smelling good shouldn't cost consumers the earth. But Stephen Bartlett wants to find out if they have what it takes to conquer the world. So give me a give me a flavour of your ambition. Should I take this? <laughs> Looking at me. Um, so. Yeah, look, I, I, we're very ambitious. We know where this can go. Yeah. I wouldn't have spent three years of my life on this if I didn't think, um, you know, that we had big, big plans for it. You know, I wasn't working at the time. I'd come yeah. back home, stay at my mum's house, and to work three years on a product where my mum's almost saying, shouldn't you go and get a job? Because she was just like, I'm not sure what you're doing. But yeah. I think that shows commitment in that we, we know where this can go. Yeah. You didn't really answer Stephen's question. Sorry. So his question was quite specific, and you talked about cheesing your mum off because you haven't got a job. That's, there's an yeah. element of dedication to that. Yeah. But that's not ambition. Yeah. You know, what's the scale of this opportunity and what's your vision? We already started to make expansion. We had organic um, sales from overseas. Uh, no, 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 we're only on. selling in the This UK. is your chance. You know what I mean? Like this, that question is your chance to inject excitement into all of us. OK. So we will get to a point where we'll be the entire fragrance layering business. So this is one of the things from the Middle East is that you wear a body wash, then you have the lotion which complements the body wash. Sorry, and, no. I'm, and only because, listen, short of time, I've got people to yeah. see, sure. other people that are coming waiting in that lift. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying really hard to get an answer out of you. What's the tactical difference? Because this, as a gift, is just not going to make it as a business on its own. Where we differentiate ourselves we feel our customers are investing in a vessel. So once they have that vessel, they have the investment and they just want to keep buying refills. So is it a personalised vial? Um, at the moment, it's not a personalised vial, but if that's what we feel the market wants, absolutely, we work towards that. That was a really good idea. 
And if I am keeping it for life, it would be great if it was yeah, personalised. Yeah. Is there a way that you could also go one stage further where you have a limited range of gold vials? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You're the creative director of their business. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to offer them a job? Yeah, I think so. I think I'm going to step down. Yeah. <laughs> and Omar, do you know what? This is what, <laughs> this is what we could do This together. is what we were You're trying to get from no, you. No, I appreciate Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it didn't come from you, though. Yeah. They've had to drag it out of them, but the concept of a personalised perfume appears to have piqued the dragon's interest. Will Tuka Suleiman be willing to buy into this trio's vision for the future of fragrance? I'm listening to all this. Yeah. Right? And to me, I think the packaging is great. But the rest of it, it looks like somebody's on the corner of Oxford Street trying to sell fake boxes, which look fantastic. You are talking rubbish, And when rubbish, you open the box, Tuka. you go... You're and, talking and, rubbish. And I smell all this, I just think, honestly, and this is me personally, I think fragrance yeah, this is, is my sure fragrance personal, is very personal view. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. And for that reason, I'm, I just wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank but you. But I Tika. just can't see myself on this journey. I'm out. One dragon down, as the den's sultan of style brands Omar, Aston, and Suzanne's products more Del Boy than Dior. Deborah Meaden always has a nose for a deal, but will she be willing to plough pounds into perfume? I'm never going to invest in this. I have got a problem with this amount of packaging. And yeah. whilst you talk about recycling the goods as your sustainable piece, you're not going to get a massive uptake from that. At the moment, yeah. people are really yeah. not using that facility. Yeah. And your answer to sustainability, honestly, don't even mention it. No. Don't mention sustainability. No, I think... Well, ain't I... nothing to, to Absolutely. shout about. Absolutely, we agree. Um, so I won't be investing. I'm out. This presentation and packaging is, is clearly first class. I think the concept is really good too. Yeah. But I think it's quite chintzy um, and I think it's of low quality and I think you've just made a major error there. That can be changed. Yeah. You're just going to spend a bit more. Absolutely. And you'll deliver success. Yeah. But I'm going to make you an offer because I really do think that there is something here. Thank you. I'm going to offer you all of the money for 25% of the business. OK, thank you. An offer from Peter Jones, albeit for over four times the equity than the 6% the entrepreneurs were originally looking to give away. Is Stephen Bartlett also poised to make a pledge? When I saw the brand, I, I fell in love with it. I, th I think it's beautiful, and I can see how much you care about detail in so many ways. Yeah, there is still work to be done. Yeah. Um, but what I will say is I will match Peter's offer, which means I'll give you all of the money for 25% of the business. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Guys. Hi, Sarah. I love them. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, <laughs> I think it's a fantastic Thank product. you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And I think your packaging is excellent. Everything. Thank you. As you've said, Thank I just thought, so much. Oh, why is nobody else doing this? This is such a <laughs> yeah. great idea. Yeah. But I think down that end of the, the, the den, I think they're just being greedy. I think your business is worth a lot more than what they've just valued it at. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. And I would also like to make you an offer. Thank you. That I think is more in line with what the business is worth. Now, I would like to offer you all of the money for 15% of the business, but the one door I think I can open, which will revolutionise your business overnight, will be walking you onto TV shopping Definitely. and yep. showing yep. you yep. how yep. to do it. Because that is one of the biggest retailers mm. globally for perfume like this. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. Sarah. Um, well, can we... <laughs> can we go chat to the wall? Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Sarah Davies steps in to undercut both Peter Jones and Stephen Bartlett, offering the trio the £50,000 they were seeking in exchange for 10% less equity. I think, look, 25 is too much. Um, you know, we were coming here expecting 10. Mm. With three competing bids on the table, the purveyors of perfume have plenty to ponder. If all three would come in. Yeah? Yeah. Thanks. 
<laughs> Thank you all very, very much. Um, we really, really appreciate the offers yeah. and um, we're well aware, and I think coming back to Peter's point earlier, what's our expectation of this? We know where we want to go. So we know that we're going to raise money in the future to really amplify this. Um, we came in here today, obviously asking at 6%. However, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And I think to work with all three of you, um, if we came back and said 20%, would you be willing to share that three ways? It's a good deal for me, because it's more than what I offered. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Interesting what you say about uh, needing to fundraise. You go the TV shopping route and that is really just going to be a cash generator from day one. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't work on the assumption that you're going to have to fundraise. Sure. That could be self-funding. So the plan's then that the guys, they'll want to spend the money. I'm the one who can deliver the cash in the short term. Yeah, so. which is why it's a great combination. No, it is, but also from an execution perspective and having been there and done it, and obviously with Stephen's background of working with some of the world's largest cosmetic brands. Yeah. I also own a company that takes big brands to market in 30 days or less. Into it's America. like Shopify on steroids. Come on. What I'm saying is, I personally would be willing to come down to 20% and share it with Stephen, if Stephen is, so that would be 10% each. But I don't think Three Dragons works for you here. And if you think that TV shopping is the answer to where you want to take this brand, um, I, th I think I find that interesting. Yeah, I'm going to be. I, I I completely agree with Peter. Yeah. Know a good deal when you see one. Okay. Yeah. Because I've seen it go bad for entrepreneurs in this yeah. game, and I'd be willing to drop down to twenty percent as well on the basis of Peter's offer. Uh, the hardest part of this response is actually saying to Sarah because I, we really would have loved to work with you. Absolutely. But you know this is just too good an offer, so we'll accept your offer and thank you very much. Thank Amazing. you so much. Great. Guys. Thank you so thank much. You. We can't thank wait you. to work with you. Thanks, guys. The sweet smell of success for Omar, Aston and Suzanne. Uh, group hug. <laughs> who leave the den with £50,000 and the backing of a duo of dragons with the ingredients to make their potions magic. <laughs> That's perfect. It was an absolutely incredible experience. But we got a great combination. We got an absolutely, absolutely fantastic winning combination. combination. We're so, so happy really about excited. that. I'll remember that. You said our offer was bad. You said At 25. You said we were greedy. You were at 25. Yeah, you could have come in with us. That's what they asked and you said no. I am locking that away. I'll remember that, you two. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, if you do watch this back and you still want to get involved, we'll still take you. Sarah, call us. <laughs> <laughs>
They're great additions to rice, pasta, grilled fish, marinated chicken thighs. They're seeking £40,000 in return for 20% of their condiment company. Just to inform you that the actual garam garlic is a bit spicy. It's very spicy, Peter. That's a very spicy one, yeah. Very. For once, it's the dragons rather than the entrepreneurs that appear to be sweating. Could I stop? For, could I get some more water, guys? <laughs> <laughs> and the pair's spice-laden samples appear to have ignited the interest of Vandana's favourite fire breather. I've got to say, yes. that green, I, I have never sat here <laughs> and emptied a dish oh, of wow. dips. That is yeah. absolutely delicious. Oh, wow. I've finished all my little chips and yeah. I've just sat here watching Deborah spoon it <laughs> into her face. I got the spoon out and I was just eating it. I was going to ask you if you had a bigger <laughs> spoon for Deborah because <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't see It's lovely. Nana. Yeah. That's you. Yeah, that's me. And that's a photograph of you. Yeah, that's my photograph. Right. Yeah. So, home recipe. Home recipe, generation and, recipe. And do you make these at home now? Or? I'm making it at home. I'm a very small business, but I'm right. making it at home. You've come in here for £40,000. Yes. Yeah. And therefore, we're going to ask you some business questions. Yeah, yeah no definitely. Problem. So, this is my accountant here, yeah? And she's joking about the accountant part. <laughs> no. OK, so, 2019, you launched the brand. That's great. So what was your turnover for the first full year? It was £5,000. And second year? Was £12,000. £12,000? Oh, yeah. And, and then, then third year, year was twenty-seven thousand pounds. And this year? And then we're projected to hit fifty-four thousand. What do you project as gross profit and net profit? The gross profit would be thirty thousand. Right. And the net profit would be nine thousand. So at the moment, this sells for how much? Five ninety-nine. Five ninety-nine. That's correct. Cost how much? Two pound fifty-four to make. So I'm, I'm thinking to myself. Yeah. Based on the profitability. Yes. Is this a business just for you? you know, and, and a family business, or is this a business where, you know, an outside investor can make a return on their investments? That, yeah. that is my question mark. Modest profits lead Tuka Suleiman to query just how big Vandana and Kunal's business could really become. But the only economics currently preoccupying Peter Jones are home economics. So, in terms of the recipe, yeah, how how secret is the recipe? I mean, my mum's the only one that knows how to make it that particular way. And Kunal, do you know how? No. So she won't tell you. She won't tell me. Yeah, don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Where you're currently selling it? We're currently selling only at farmers markets. So give me the scene in the kitchen. How many can you do in one day? In one day, at least I'm doing 20, 20, 20 60, 70. I do it. 70? Currently, yeah. So you can make 70 of those in one day? Yeah, one day, yeah. Wow. Have you heard of reggae, reggae sauce? Of course. Yeah, yeah. I've seen... seen yeah. Deborah and you were there at that time, reggae, reggae sauce. Yeah. I, I haven't seen Sarah, you know, the last two years I've been watching, and Stephen as well. You know, they, they have kids for me, both of them. <laughs> <They> <laughs> Just <are>. the kids. <laughs> they yeah. are. They are nice kids. Yeah. Oh, um, when Levi started, he did exactly the same. Mm. He was in his kitchen doing the stuff, and then when we went to Sainsbury's, our first order was for 200,000 bottles. Wow. Incredible. But we had to outsource it to a manufacturer. Yeah. We've spoken to a company that we want to try and outsource our products to, and they're going to try and recreate um, our kind of recipe. Talk us through what you think the company might be able to produce for you, then. Yeah, they produce at £1.55 per unit. Yep, yeah. so one fifty-five per unit. Uh, which is obviously loads better than the 250 exactly, that you're yeah. making it at. Do they have minimum order quantities you have to hit, though? Or is that there is 25,000 was the minimum order. And, and can I just check, are you sure you want to go this route? Ramp up production, turn this from being, you know, a small family-run business out of the kitchen, selling at the farmer's market, yeah. to scaling, because the business will look very, very different yeah. when you scale it to that level. I'm, I mean, my, my mum's always been supportive of me my whole life. And she's always wanted to do like a sauce business, cooking business. But she's been very selfless in life. So now she's come to that age, I'm like, and I feel it's like too much for me I, to I, do it at home. I feel I feel like now it's time for her to like have a brand because I believe her chutneys are better than chutneys out there. As I believe her chutneys are some of the best. I want we your want help. Next, you know, any any one of you can help me we out. We want to be this. Uh, the next Patax or yeah. the next Charles. That's our dream. That's the dream. 
Bandana and Kunal have ambitious plans to transform their homespun chutneys into a household name. But retail magnate Tuka Suleiman wants to find out more about the duo's competition. So, you're in the farmer's market. Yeah. At the moment, this sells for $5.99, yeah. right? Yeah, that's now, correct. If I wanted to go to supermarket today, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to buy not the same quality, yeah. Yeah. but equivalent, yeah. Yeah. what would I pay? I Marks and Spencer does this for two fifty, dollars maybe. So, you're, you're a premium product. Yeah. Yeah. You are at the upper end of the market. Course, yeah. yeah, upper end of the market. Yeah. yeah. What is the shelf life of this product? Only uh, 10 days. 10 days from 10 days for the... You've got to change this product if you want to sell it in the supermarket. Yeah. That, no supermarket would take this product I, at the moment. Yeah, I need, no, a, need a longer shelf life. Yeah. Longer shelf life yeah, yeah. has to be a minimum, yeah. Th yeah. But we've got, we found a process where uh, we can keep that product fresh for approximately five months. But what will that do to the taste? I mean, we've tried the taste. It, it, it's very similar to the, the actual taste. The problem with that is that actually is going to change when you make it long life. Yeah. yeah OK. And I, I worry that you want to get out there into all the big supermarkets, but you're going to have to compromise, and you yeah. won't like that, because this is lovely. Yeah. If I were you, I would speak to some delis, some delicatessens. Actually, that yeah. should be your first start. Yeah. You know, you're going to get a higher price for it. You'll you'll begin to learn which is your big product, how yeah. you know how far you can push the sell by date. Yeah. You'll learn a lot about your product. And for me, that's what I would do before you even consider going out to the yeah. supermarkets. Yeah. So I'm afraid I won't be investing. Yeah, OK. I thank found you that very feedback. hard to say no, because you, you are so lovely. Yeah, no, thank you, Sam. No, that's fine, Deborah. That's OK. This is a rare know. side of me. Yeah, that's but, OK. But I'm out. A blow for the pickle-producing pair who have lost their first, and in Vandana's case, favourite dragon. Is Sauce Supremo Peter Jones willing to take this chutney from the kitchen table to the supermarket shelf? Look, I, th I think it's lovely, as you know, but I think at the moment there is this massive void of how do you take this and commercialise it. The route for this, definitely, is almost a stepping stone of how do you get out of the kitchen and into a smaller kitchen for production. I would say that that's your route to test the market. I would also continue to go to your farmer's markets because you're going to sell that at a retail price. Yeah. Of course. If you start selling to others... Yeah. You're giving away margin that you can't afford to give away at this point. Yeah, that's yeah, true, very true, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes scale doesn't mean profitability. Yeah. OK. It means a lot of sacrifice... Yeah. ..and sometimes not a lot of return. But for today, it is, it is too early. As beautiful yeah. as the product is, yeah. I'm going to have to say that I'm out. But it's lovely to meet you. Um, I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago, I invested in a... Not a similar tasting product, yeah. yeah. But a similar product night. It was chili jam, so it was a, yeah. a yeah. jar-based chutney. Yeah. yeah. And I've been on a steep learning curve in this industry. I think you need to be careful of not wanting to run before you can walk. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Because it sounds to me that you've got this wonderful family business that you can run together at the moment with no investors breathing down your neck. Yeah. yeah. And for me, so it, it means that I don't want to invest because I don't want to take this away from you. No, thank you. So I'm going to say that I'm out, but my word, beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate much. that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, my mouth is so thankful for being able to try this because it really is delicious. It's like a really nice pain. <laughs> but when I look at this from an investment standpoint, there's a lot of work to be done. Yeah. From an investment standpoint, it doesn't taste so good. So I'm going to say that and, um, I'm sorry, but I'm, but I'm out. Four dragons down. Vandana and Kunal's chutney has got Tuka Suleiman's taste buds tingling. But have they also given him an appetite to invest? You got some good advice today. Yeah, advice, definitely. Yeah. I, I would say that what you need to do is to say, right, I'm going to bring some help at home, make some more, yeah. increase your production, yeah. have 50 or 100 more on a Saturday. You don't need working capital, you don't need kitchens. Unless you try that, you won't grow the business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as an investable opportunity, yeah. I wouldn't want to take shares from you. This is your business, this yeah. is your baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But today, unfortunately, I'm going to give you your baby back because I'm not going to invest. 
I wish you all the best, and I'm out. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Sadly for Vandana and Kunal... Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Good luck. Thank you. They must leave the den empty-handed. But universal praise for their product means that whilst they may be out, they're by no means down. It was fantastic to see all of them. The process, which I enjoyed it. It was really nice, yeah. My mom's the happiest woman in the world, so yeah. we, we, we're both happy there. Yeah. She's happy. When we had some great feedback. Yeah. Nothing, nothing bad was said about our product. You know, I'm glad, I'm blessed. I like the date one. Oh, I don't like the date one. Back in the den, a deal is being done after all. Anybody not like their green one? I'll do, I'll do you a trade. <laughs> I love the green. I'm trading. Oh, hang on, I want the red then. What do you want? I want the red. Good trade. Yeah, that's there it. Go. Thank you very much. The fact that they love my mum's chutney, that it's made my mum proud, and the fact that she's met her role models and people that she looks up to, and I look up to them all the time, watch the show all the time, so it's a blessing to be on the show. Limbering up to face the dragons is Zimbabwean-born entrepreneur Rupert Cattell. So we've invented a machine that does an existing exercise in a completely different way. Road rower. Wow. I think it's a new exercise machine. I can't wait to see it in use. Bag a dragon and Rupert's business could pile on the pounds. But the prospect of entering the den is making him sweat. What's my biggest fear? Um, well, I suppose probably ego. I've spent... Uh, 40 odd years building a business career and I don't want to be made to look a chump in front of millions of people. Hi Dragons, my name is Rupert Cattell and I'm the founder and CEO of Road Rower. And I'm looking for a £50,000 investment for 10% of my business. So for more years than I can care to remember, I've sat in sweaty gyms on rowing machines staring at a wall. And how boring is that? But the reason I did it was because rowing is the most fantastic all-over body exercise. Wouldn't it be great if somebody invented a bike that mirrored the rowing action and you were out in the fresh air and the sunshine and you were having fun? And so that's where the idea of the road rower came from. So let me show you how it works. You're sitting on a nice big wide seat, feet on the pedals, hands on the handlebars. You pull back with the handlebars push away with the feet, that turns the cog, which drives the chain, which turns the wheel, which gives you forward momentum. And there's also an electric motor to help you with those starts and tricky hill climbs. Now we're pre-revenue. Uh, the retail price is going to be three and a half thousand pounds. Now, would anyone like to have a go? Can I try it? Please. A fitness machine that combines the benefits of rowing and cycling is the brainchild of entrepreneur and inventor Rupert Cattell. Just relax. Nice and slow, don't be jerky. He's seeking a £50,000 investment for a 10% share in his company. You're actually not going anywhere, though. No, Peter, sorry. It's, um, it's obviously on a stand because if we're trying to put it in the studio, it'll go all over the place, so... Would it? Well, yeah, it's because it's, it, it, it one stroke would take you probably 20 or 30 feet. Right. With Stephen Bartlett's workout now complete, a fundamental question is exercising Peter Jones. Why? Why do you think that people would buy this product? OK, so um, it gets you outside and it stops you sitting on a rowing machine getting bored out of your brain. What's the next why? So, so, so why? So they still want to do exercise. They want to look good physically, yeah? So that's one of the main drivers, is they, you know, they all no, want to look that. like Stephen. So, look, so you want to look um, like this. You, here you go. You want to look like this. this. I get that. But I'm going on the why, so why? I don't get the point here. I don't, I really don't. I, I, well, because... I, I don't, I don't understand the question, because I feel as though I've kind of answered it. No, you haven't. Okay. No, you haven't, because you, your rationale for why you've answered on the basis of the fact that people want to get fit and they want to get outside. Yeah. That's not a good enough why, because I could just walk outside and run down the road. Indeed, you could, absolutely. I could get on my bike and go down the road, but I'm saying, why would you do that on a road rower? OK, because firstly, on a bike, you're only exercising your legs, yeah? Secondly, 
if you're going for a run, you're jarring your knees and your joints and your hips and so forth, whereas on a rowing machine or a rowing bike, you're not doing any of that. Rupert is adamant that his invention offers all the benefits of cycling, running and rowing, with none of the potential drawbacks. Now, Tuka Suleiman wants to find out more about the man behind the machine. So what makes you an inventor? So what's oh, your background? Gosh. Uh, so I've been an entrepreneur for 40 years. Yep. Uh, is it genetic? My great-grandfather was a guy called Edgar Hooley who invented tarmac. All right. So give us a couple of examples of what you've created and, and how they've ended up. So um, I originally qualified as a solicitor and I was always a very reluctant lawyer. So I decided to start a chain of day nurseries. Um, and after eight or nine years, I sold that. So you, um, you, you got good money for it? Uh, yeah, it's okay. Good. Yeah. My why is slightly different to Peter's. Mm. Why don't you, you've got the money, why do, what are you doing here? Why don't you, if you believe in this, just do it? Yeah, very good question. Because I want you. <laughs> because I've never started a, a leisure product like this before. Okay, King, this what is do a you really good idea. And so, okay, so I need help with how to position the product, how to answer Peter's question about the why. I know, no. I know, I know. No, mm -hmm. no. The first question of anything before you start down the road on a business is why. Um, I believe, I believe I've given the answer to the why question. Peter's no, but you just said Pe you want to know, you, that's no, what you want to know from us. But I believe I've given you the why question because it's fantastic exercise and it's really good fun. You're so going maybe back I'm to missing Peter's something. why. I'm yeah, not okay. asking, I'm well, saying okay, what so, you're, you're, okay, so a, you're a wealthy want... guy, mm -hmm. you've, you've got, you're absolutely committed to this. Why are you in here? Because I want your knowledge and skill of how to develop and build the market for something that's so revolutionary and different. With a dragon behind him, Rupert believes his creation could have serious pull. Stephen Bartlett was quick to test out the product, but will he be as eager to jump on board with the business? I actually think it's quite cool. I think it's really cool. And thank you, Stephen, uh, because I get loads of compliments it. about it from children saying to their parents, oh, Dad, look at that cool bike. That's what I mean. For me, this is a a fun leisure thing to do with your maybe your family when you're in the countryside. I could see myself and my girlfriend once, you know, we've rented bicycles. We've sometimes rent really cool modes of transport for fun, like a Segway, on the weekend when we when we're in a space where we're we're traveling through nature or something like that. But it's definitely not a fitness item. It's really inconvenient and clunky as a fitness item. And it's, it's, I'm not going to be able to commute to work on this because there's real issues with the turning. The turning circle, if we were in here, would be so wide, there's no chance on earth I would be able to go through traffic or past people on this massive contraption where I can't turn. I've, I've, I've ridden this around the streets of central London. But contrast that to a bicycle. My turning circle on a bicycle might be two metres. Yeah. On here, it would yep. be ten, eight or ten metres. Right, maybe not that's quite as much as that, but yeah, okay, yeah, it's going so to... So that's what I think. I think yeah. from a positioning standpoint, going to, I don't know, leisure, holiday companies that put those segways and those really interesting nature places, and it's a cool new mode of transport, is maybe a market. How big is that market? Don't know. How do we access that market? Don't really know. So as much as I do think it's cool, I do think it's cool, um, I'm going to say that I'm out because I don't think it's an investment. Rupert loses his first dragon as Stephen Bartlett struggles to get a handle on his machine's potential market. Peter Jones, however, seems more preoccupied by this entrepreneur's family history. Your grandfather invented tarmac. <laughs> yeah. That's wow. Great grandfather, great grandfather. Did he monetize that? Is he a billionaire? Um, no, he ran out of money. No. Um, he, sold it, he sold his shares out of that. But where he went wrong is he then put all of that money into a glove factory. OK. Is there, any, is there anything that gives you a little bit of lessons of the past that you could bring into the current? In other words, he lost all his money. I know where you're going with this, Peter. Um, and, and, 
And I've been, I've been in business for 40 years, and yes, I've made a, you know, a million mistakes, and I learn always from my mistakes. Um, but I just think, I, I believe in this, and I think it's really good fun, and it's a great product. Look, I do think that these are things where there are some people in life, you look at things, you think, do you know what? I'm going to see if this works. Could this work? And that's a, that's a great thing, because if we didn't have inventors today, where would we be? Um, but I think there's one reason why you don't see going down on two wheels across the whole of the country. You don't see multi-gyms. You don't see steppers. <laughs> you, there's a reason for that, is that it just doesn't work commercially. It's not an investment today, and I'm out. Listen, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> um, and, you know, if I don't like something, <laughs> I can't invest in it. <laughs> so it's, it's as simple as that, so I won't be. I'm okay. out. Thank you. Rupert, to go. You have a passion for rowing. Always have. And your passion for rowing, in my view, has blurred you with the commerciality of this product. Personally, I think it, it looks like it's come out of a Frankenstein's workshop. Oh, right. <laughs> a bit harsh. Right. It's all the bits and the wire. It's all it's cool. the chains going everywhere. Thanks, Stephen. It just doesn't look right. And, and I, ju I just think you will struggle with this. But surely, surely, that one of the key ingredients you're looking for... I'm not sure for... you're going to convince them. Are you in or out, Tuca? Yeah. <laughs> look, all I'm, all I'm saying to you, Rupert, is I commend you for really, really chasing your passion. But you won't be having my money to back it up. OK. For that reason, I'm out. Four dragons down, and Rupert's hopes of rowing into the sunset with a life-changing deal now lie solely with Sarah Davies. I think you've had a bit of a harder time in here today than you've deserved. Because <laughs> I actually looked at that when I was sat here before you came out the lift, and I thought, I don't know what that is, but that looks pretty awesome. And, and actually, I felt like when you explained to Peter the why, you just didn't do it succinctly enough. Uh -huh. Because when I was listening to you, I was thinking, oh, yeah, I like to go running, and you're right. Mm. It's terrible for my joints. Mm. And I love going on the rowing machine at the gym, but it's really boring. Mm. So mm. I can totally see the need for the product. Yep. The problem is you've got the wrong price point for the demographic of customer you're hitting. You haven't come in here saying that this is pitched for professional rowers to train. Had you said that, I could understand, OK, that's the niche market they'd prepared to spend three and a half thousand pounds. But you haven't said it's that market. You've said it's a wider, more generic market, which might be someone like me who likes rowing, wants to cycle, doesn't want to row. But I wouldn't spend three and a half grand on that. So I think the market is very, very niche and very small. So I definitely won't be giving you 50 grand of my hard-earned cash to get this off the ground. Um, but well done on inventing something that's pretty clever and looks really cool. But um, I won't be investing in that much. OK, thanks, Sarah. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. As far as investment from a dragon is concerned, it's the end of the road for Rupert. Four. <clears throat> um, a bit uh, battered and bruised. That was quite brutal. There are some things that are just not meant to be. And that's one of them. <laughs> I'm still very passionate about it. If it captures the, the imagination, then who knows? It might be an Olympic sport one day, you know? Who's to tell? Last to face the dragons is Northumberland-based entrepreneur Dan Robson. I've always dreamed about possibly entering the dragon's den, so I think it's it's very strange actually being here today. It's a, a bit of a shell shock, to be honest with you. <laughs> if Dan can clinch a deal, his business will be on the up. But for now, he's keeping his eyes firmly down. My biggest fear about going into the den is a lot of my friends watch this show, so I just better make sure my flies are up, I think. Hello, Dragons. I'm Dan Robson, and I'm the managing director and co-founder of Grow So Simple, a design and manufacturing business based in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. And I'm here today with one simple mission, to get dirt under the fingernails of all the households in Great Britain. We're going to do that through our innovative technologies in the gardening kits. We believe, whether in a third-storey balcony or an allotment garden, 
people should have access to growing their own fresh fruit and vegetables and eating plant to plate. I'm here today to ask for £80,000 for 10% equity of Grow So Simple. Earlier this year, we rolled out into 144 Asda stores across the country. And I'm hoping that I can encourage you to join my green gardening revolution. Eco-friendly seed kits for growing fruit and veg are the offering from entrepreneur Dan Robson. You should have a seed cell, so I've got mine here. It's a biodegradable pod containing seeds. Dan is looking to give away 10% of his company. All you need to do is simply push into the soil, water, in return for an £80,000 investment. As the moisture is absorbed into the pulp, it feeds it to the seed, it starts to break down and leaves zero waste. Tech titan Peter Jones is always on the lookout for something new. So does his appetite for innovation extend from screens to greens? Dan. Hi, Peter. I've not seen anything quite like this. Yeah, it's very unique. Um, we believe we're the only completely biodegradable pod in the world. Have you protected it? Sure, so the seed cell product is actually patented. That's granted in the UK and Europe. OK, so give me some ideas, then, of the size of the business. So, 2019, we turned over 77,000 with a net loss of £168,000. 2020? 2020, we had a £254,000 turnover and a £17,000 net profit. 2021, we had a £314,000 turnover with a £30,000 net loss. This year, we'll close on a £335,000 turnover with a hundred and. £72,000 gross profit and a £50,000 net. Congratulations in putting something together that's very impressive. Thank you, Peter. Praise from Peter Jones. Will Sara Davies, who has previously invested in plantable seed books, be similarly impressed? It's brilliant. I mean, I, oh, I'm sure you. it won't surprise you to hear. I absolutely love it. Oh, thank you. Um, That's lovely to hear. Since I invested in Wilson a couple of years ago, I've really got into this market. Yeah. I think especially during the pandemic and the lockdown, yeah. so many people have just really got into this. Yeah. So what's the growth plan? So we've launched the website last week and we're just literally starting to, to move on some of the traffic on the website. So we've got a kids product, which is on the table there. So we have a license agreement at the moment with Hasbro. Mm -hmm and that's for Peppa Pig licensing. We're talking to Target, Walmart, Wayfair, um, QVC, so we're actually talking to some of the biggest customers um, in the world, really. Excellent. Hey, it's all sounding great so far. I must be missing something here. I'm like, I must have missed something in the presentation, because is, it, is this a seed in a piece of cardboard? Um, to essentially, yes. And I'm like, really, then I'm really surprised that like loads of people are buying it, because I thought, in my head, I was thinking, well, if I wanted to go and do, plant some tomatoes, I'd go buy some tomato seeds and put them in the ground. Is it a bit of a gimmick? Um, I don't think so. I mean, in terms of um, our customer base, you know, we feel that we're quite disruptive in the market, um, especially particularly with the online, you know, th through the post to a younger audience. Also, um, small space gardening is now a huge thing, and so, you know, balcony gardens and things like that, it just makes it so much easier. Easier than a seed, just getting the seeds? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to worry about depth or the amount of water. You don't have to worry about frost or pests. Um, you know, it goes in the ground, absorbs all the moisture, feeds it directly to the seed, and as it all mulches around the seed, it actually feeds the seed as well. Right. Dan tries to convince a sceptical Stephen Bartlett his product has the edge over traditional seeds. Now, a retail savvy Tuka Suleiman is keen to explore his current route to market. So let's talk about Asda for a second. And how big was that order? So that was £165,000. When did you first ship your first goods to Asda? This year. When this year? February. How many times have you repeated? Uh, we haven't yet. It was a large order. So... Yeah, but I know. But normally, if something sells very well, mm -hmm. they'll soon come back for repeats. You're turning over 335,000. So 50% of your turnover mm -hmm. this year was Asda. Mm -hmm. So if Asda don't come back, you've lost 50% of your turnover. So at the moment, there's a risk. Yeah, if you haven't had feedback now after this period of time, I can tell you that their level of, it, of interest has waned. 
Have you asked them for the sellout of, of how you're doing against traditional seeds and how your product is selling in the competition? Not yet, no. But why? Um, You've been in there since February. You've had many, many months to ask the most important question. How am I doing against my competition and am I outselling the seed packets? This is why I need a dragon. For the, the, you know, we've got into the supermarkets, but, but no, we're not Dan, experienced Dan, in dealing Dan, with Dan, it. that's not a dragon. A dragon can't teach you common sense. That's not a dragon's role. But it's a really key question. Yeah. You know, what's your rate of sale in each store at the moment, per week? I, I don't know, Pete, I'm afraid. You speak to a lot of business people and they're checking the numbers every single day. Yeah. You know, every single morning I get a phone from Tuka, Tuka and as much as I love to hear from him, he just tells me, oh, my rate of sale today on this line, that line. Yeah. And then I tell him what my rate of sale is in my across my business. You've got to, if you're not all over it. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'll take that on board. Have you had any more supermarkets approach you? Have you approached anybody else who are interested? We've talked to, we were talking to a few supermarkets, but we have a two years exclusivity right. with Asda uh, as our first supermarket. They just asked us not to approach anyone else for two years, and we agreed. OK, and, th and when did that get agreed? Um, it would have been probably earlier this year when we first pitched them. Because that just cuts off the whole of retail now in this country. Uh, sorry, it's, it's just for the major four supermarkets. Well, the, the, yeah, but that's... <laughs> it's big, isn't it? Dragon Delving has revealed that when it comes to retail, Dan's options for increasing sales are severely restricted. Will Tuka Suleiman see sufficient potential for future growth to make this young entrepreneur an offer? You've got a great idea. However, I would... I would doubt your business acumen. And I'll tell you why. 50% of your business is for one channel. And you've not answered a single question regarding that 50% of turnover. So with all the credibility that you walked in at the beginning, unfortunately, you've not convinced me. And, and I know a little bit about retail and I've already seen the warning signs of, of where you're at. This is not investable, and I'm out. Disappointment for Dan, who has lost his first dragon. Stephen Bartlett identified an opportunity for Dan to supersize seed sales online. So is he prepared to plough his cash into this veg-growing venture? Do you know what it is? I'm just... You're really, really... I actually think you're really impressive, and you're very, very thoughtful. So this feels, for me, as someone that's got a little bit of experience in planting and grew up planting stuff when we, in our garden when we were younger, feels like an additional step. Yeah. One that, in some ways, actually separates me from the, the naturalness of holding a seed, seeing the seed, understanding the seed, and putting it in the ground. Here I'm holding a piece of cardboard and putting some cardboard in the ground. And I don't know if I love that as an alternative. Um, so, for the reasons I've stated, I'm going to say that I'm out, but I wish you the very best. Dan, I, I think you've got so much right with the business. I really do. Um, and I can't compliment you anymore. You've had a lot of compliments about the way you've put this together. And I don't think that you're thinking the wrong things because you're moving down an avenue where you've gone with Hasbro. I think that could be your play because Parents will buy gift this for their kids. They get a lovely pack like this. That's a gift pack to the kids that come forward and they, that gets them really engaged. But I still believe you're gonna have a really good business, but it's not gonna be big enough. You're gonna be sowing a lot of seeds for a long time to make a return on your money. And I think that that, for me, just is the reason why I'm gonna say that I'm out. I think you're gonna have a good business but I think it's got its limits. I think it's going to be, it's going to become a gifting style product. But its return rate, it, well, or its growth is going to rely on you constantly coming up with a new product, which yeah. I'm sure you will. Yeah. But, but, but goodness me, that's going to be a hell of a wheel to get yourself on and, and keep going. Um, so I won't be investing, I'm out. Four dragons have now walked away from the deal. Dan's hopes of securing the cash and capability his company craves now lie solely with Sarah Davies.
Dan. Hi, Sarah. So it's just me? It's tough in the den, isn't it? <laughs> it's hard work, yeah. <laughs> you are, you are faring really well. <laughs> I feel for you, you're taking a bit of a batter in there. Thank you. OK, I'm, doesn't mean I'm going to go easy on you, though. I'm All just right. telling you okay. I fail for you a little bit. Um, I think you've got a great business. Yeah. I think some of the other dragons haven't maybe understood it. OK. I feel like I can totally exactly see what you're doing. Thank it's you. not actually that dissimilar to the craft market. I've written down here, making gardening accessible. It's uh, missed a generation. A lot of people don't know where to start, yeah. whether it's doing it with their kids or whether it's just starting their own window box. Yeah. I know so many people who fit that bill, and it's exactly what we do in the crafting market. And I'm familiar with the space. And you're on the doorstep, which, you know, it's just... Which is always out handy. <laughs> to be honest, the only thing I don't really like is the valuation that you've put on this. But I can change that. So I'm going to make you an offer. OK. And I will offer you all of the money, all 80,000. But I would like to take 20% of the business. Thank you, Zara. Appreciate you letting me know. It's great. Obviously, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't sort of negotiate at some point. I, I, I'll point out to you the situation you're in. Yeah. At the moment, I'm holding all the aces, you've got none. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with that negotiation. <laughs> in that case, I'd love to accept your offer. Fantastic! Hey! <laughs> that's, the, that, that's the right answer. <laughs> well done, good luck. Thanks, Peter. Well Thanks done, well done Great well job. Done. Thank you. Thank you all. Dan has played his cards right. Thanks. He leaves the den with £80,000 and the backing of a dragon with the expertise to ensure his company's salad days still lie ahead. In all honesty, after the first dragon said they were out, I did sort of start to panic, but I could sort of see a bit of a glint in Zara's eyes. I decided, ten minutes into that pitch, I decided I'm having that one, and if I have to, I'll fight them all up for it. I think Zara's already in that market. She knows the market, she knows the, the product, so I'm really excited to see what she'll bring to the business. That was a really good seed investment. I was waiting for the puns coming in. Well, the dragons have certainly spent some cash tonight, dealing out £130,000 on a perfume company and a gardening range. Now, if you fancy pitching your business to Britain's fiercest fire breathers, applications for Series 21 are now open and the details can be found on the BBC website. Next time... I would hazard a guess you are one of the best people in the world at doing this. I could create this whole collection for five grand. I'll bet you 150 grand you can't. Wow. Well done, darling. I'm not surprised you're out because you couldn't have done anything with this business. Couldn't have done anything with this. <laughs> so when you say you've built a brand... Oh, it's unrivaled, Deborah, though. How did you feel in those? Flirtatious. I feel like I let myself down a bit with that. I'm going to be really honest with you, mate. You have started off on the back foot. I love you too, thank you. I mean, it's quite early, but let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs>